Hey there. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. I had a beer. It's evening here, so Wonderful. it's all right. <laughs> and you? <laughs> I'm doing good. So how was your day so far? It's been um, it's been good. I've been running errands. Went to the shoemaker and uh, bought some beer and a shovel. So that's what I've been doing. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And uh, March 11th, your EP Dystopia is getting released. So yep. can you tell me a bit about the making of this EP? Uh, sure. Um, basically, what we did was we had uh, a few uh, cover songs we wanted to do uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a Swedish version of uh, one of the songs from the, from the latest album. And uh, we had a new bass player uh, that we hadn't really recorded anything with. So we thought we might as well just book a few dates in the studio and just do a few songs. And um, we didn't really tend for it to be, uh, like we didn't know what it would become like release wise. We wanted like to have some sort of extra material to mm -hmm. just bring along for whatever might come up. But then this idea of doing it sort of like a maxi, maxi single thing with the with this uh, emerged. So we, we used all that. And um, that's the first, uh, first th the first songs that um, Ryan actually plays on. So. That's nice. And um, it was, you know, it was more of a standing in the studio and recording like everyone all at the same time, like mm -hmm. jamming basically and just recording it. So it wasn't too serious, but it sounded pretty good. So we decided to release it. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, talking about this album, uh, you made an amazing work on DAD Sleeping My Day Away an amazing song by the band itself and your version is really amazing to listen to so how Thank did you, you come up come up with the selection of this particular song um i think it started uh adam our drummer he was a bit um he didn't really understand the charm with the ad mm -hmm. but we played the same festival as them like a, a few years back in france somewhere i think it was racemus fest or something Mm -hmm. uh, so DAD played and we played and me and Martin uh, who plays guitar we like we, we really like the band we, we've always always liked the band but Adam he's come more from you know he's from the more death metal sort of yeah. uh, background uh, so we basically just dragged him along to see DAD and once their show was over he was so thrilled by their show that he did a little coup he staged a coup, so he took one of our uh, albums and taped it to DAD's dressing room <laughs> and said, good job, lads, love the show, uh, here you go, here's a little gift. And um, actually Jens, Jens, the singer, ended up asking if we, if we wanted to tour with his uh, solo project after mm -hmm. that, which we unfortunately couldn't do because we were... Uh, we had other plans, but that sort of opened uh, him up for the whole DAD vibe. Mm -hmm. And then when we were, you know, brainstorming what songs to play, we thought like that would be fun because it's it's a classic, but no one ever plays it. So yeah, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. And uh, talking about the track listing of this album, opening with Dystopia, and a list of covers, and ending with letter from Alan Street. So. What was this real idea to put behind the opening and ending with your own song and filling up with the covers? Uh, I didn't really think it, uh, in those terms, really. Basically, I just thought, you know, there's a whole bunch of technical uh, sort of aspects into what songs go where. Mm -hmm. First of all, you, you can't, like, you have to look at how long they are because you can't put all the long songs on one side and all the short ones because it won't fit. So you have to sort it out that way. And then you don't want like too many songs in the same key after each other, mm -hmm. or if they got the same chord prog progression. Yeah. So you want it like, that's the first thing. And then also if the songs all start with the in yeah. the title, you might want to just switch it up a bit. So there's really not that much of a thought into it but uh, now that you mention it it's sand it sort of sandwiches the whole thing when we yeah. had a, one of our songs there one of our songs there so maybe that was a good move i don't know <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wonderful and uh 
Uh, the talking about the album art is really fascinating. A great album artwork that you have done to this album. So what was the idea behind this album art and how did you come up with this art actually? Uh, oh, there's, uh, what's the name of that guy, Juan, uh, who made the artwork, he's an Argentinian dude. Uh, I'd seen some of his earlier stuff, like I think he did a poster for us way back, along with Bulser and Lucifer for a festival or something. Mm -hmm. And he did, uh, I think he did a, either a Lucifer or a helicopter thing, and I, I like the style. Uh, and as with everything with this band, I... Um, don't i'm never out you know i'm always pushing the deadlines yeah. so i was trying to figure something out but i couldn't really you know i i, I like to do art, or artwork myself because you know it kind of concludes the whole uh, album thing but since this was more of a like you know pick and choose sort of mishmash yeah. of songs didn't really need that so i emailed uh, juan machando i think his name is and he was like sure uh, do you do you need like what do you want? And I'm like, the album title uh, or the the, the record uh, is gonna be called Dystopia EP. Do whatever you want. And then he sent me a first draft that looked exactly like the like the one that we went to print. He did a minor, a few minor mm -hmm. um, adjustments, but it's I think it's the best looking cover we have so far. Uh, it's you know I like that comic book style sort of. Mm -hmm. thing in it. My favorite little detail with that cover is uh, are the rats with space helmets on the yeah. bomb in the foreground. Yeah. Nice little touch. Yeah. It's amazing, amazing. <laughs> and and what are the release date plans for you guys? The, the tour plans? No, the day, the album release date, do you guys have some plans on the day of the release? Oh, well, when we released the uh, what what album was that when we released uh, uh, in ignorance we trust we all ate mushrooms and got in we got really really <laughs> weird weird on mushrooms that was a bit too much so i'm thinking maybe we'll just have a few beers and tell each other that we love each other <laughs> wonderful wonderful and uh, any plans to go on and tour yeah, we're, we're go heading out uh, if everything goes well, you know, so that COVID thing, it's always, uh, it's, 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 it got boring, boring a long time ago, but um, yeah, there's a European tour, we're going to trail our way down to Spain and back uh, in March, and uh, we got a few festivals uh, booked and being booked for this summer and fall, uh, and hopefully we'll get uh, across to some other continents. We played South America a few years ago. I would love to do a North American thing. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I just want to get out and travel because I've been sitting at home. Yeah. And I can't say that I've been playing guitar. I would That would sound good. I've been playing guitar and writing songs. And I'll, i just been screwing around with my car and uh, drinking beer. So I want to get out and do something real. <laughs> so book us. Book us, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, how has the road been for you guys so far? The road? Yeah. Uh, it's our element. It's what we do. We really feel at home when we're touring. I mean, sometimes it's hard and it is. it was easier. Like, we've been a band for 10 years now. And that, those yeah. 10 years have been going, like, they've been going so by so fast. Uh, it was a bit easier when you were... 24, 25 to keep up with everything. But I've skipped getting up for breakfast at hotels. So I just sleep instead. That means I could drink a few beers after the show and then still be fit for a fight. So you have to like eliminate one of the um, uh, sort of uh, tasks at hand when touring. Like if you're young, you can play a show, drink beer, party all night, go do something stupid with, with a stranger, wake <laughs> up, go to the hotel lobby uh, or to the breakfast, eat your food, go back, have another nap, then drive to the next show five hours, up on stage, you could do that. But then you sort of like, you need to just take out a few different ingredients to that equation. Yeah. And I chose a breakfast because I like my rock and I like my beer and I don't mind driving, so... <laughs> 
yeah, <laughs> sleep is good sometimes, even though there's substitutions for that. Too, so I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, would you like to share some of the great moments that you had over the years? Uh, yeah, well, the great moments aren't uh, as interesting as the weird ones, I'd say, but you know, we played, uh, I'll start with a, with a good moment and uh, I'll end with uh, uh, a spooky one. So we played a festival in Germany somewhere. Uh, it was summer and we've been touring for a while and we were to play this festival called uh, Rock in Wald, in the middle of the forest, nowhere. Uh, and they had booked all like maybe five, six uh, Swedish bands the same day. So we all like we knew each other pretty much everyone in, in those bands so we, we got together and it felt like a Swedish holiday mm -hmm. so everyone was super happy and you know it was a good vibe and we played fairly early and I remember it was like it was crowded like everyone was there and then I'm looking to the right and I'm seeing Nick from the helicopters standing there having a beer and enjoying the show and then I'm see, looking to the left and I see the graveyard guys standing uh, on the other side, seeing the show. And, and I was like, okay, all right, let's play some rock music and have fun. Like that's what, that was a good, good vibe. And we ended up doing like a few encores, but uh, uh, I think, I think it, it was Imperial State Electric. Yeah, so that played. So uh, we did a Thin Lizzy song with them. So that, you know, those sort of moments where, when you like feel when there's that sort of magic in the air, because everyone just wants to have fun and they're your friends and you got to know them maybe 10 years ago when they are touring and you all get together and end up at the same place. It's, uh, you know, it's like going to a festival. It's, it's great. It's a party vibe. Then there are different, uh, <laughs> what, when should I start? Um, maybe the time that I, uh, charged a guy with a bro uh, i i was drinking champagne in germany we played a city festival in germany somewhere i don't remember where it was it was fine it was just you know big stage small city probably paid by by the city it was you know not really a rock show it was in the middle of the summer and um, the show went well and we had a few beers and then a friend of mine called me on the telephone and i went uh, to take that call, having a, a bottle of champagne in my other hand. Then all of a sudden, I see two guys emerging from over yonder. And they, uh, they walk with, you know, you can tell, even if you don't speak German, you can tell when there's trouble lurking ahead. <laughs> so I'm like looking at them, trying to be as invisible as possible, which obviously <laughs> didn't work out. Uh, and they approach me. And in my drunken calculating brain i figure well it's better to just bluff and go for it because obviously they i can tell by by their posture that they want trouble so i i, I just break that champagne bottle yeah. and i charge them with whatever is left in my hand which yeah. works on one of the guy not the cool guy or the the most angry guy so he disappears for maybe a minute or so and then the other guy kind of backs up and then he kind of calls my bluff so yes. I uh, and so do I I'm like okay I'm a, I'm out of tricks now but yeah. then then I remember yeah we played a show and there's a guy a security dude standing by the back backstage entrance so I'm just I'm pretty fast I ran in there and it was nice that that guy had uh, like the the guard like the the security guy guarding the entrance yeah. he was on his toes because he's German so that was nice and he stopped the the uh, angry um, uh, drunk who wanted to for some reason mess with me maybe because i charged him with the bottle uh, and and i and i and i just run in there uh, and i'm like a bit jacked up and i'm like oh that was weird and my bandmates are sitting around with some sort of i don't know it was a record label guy i think it was a record label guy they're having a sort of a semi meeting and i'm all, i'm running in there with like <laughs> no shirt on, half a bottle of champagne and just panting like crazy. And they're like, what's going on? Uh, 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 nothing, nothing. What are we talking about here? 
and then I, I take out my phone from from my um, from my pants, and uh, I didn't hang up the telephone call. So my friend is still there and wanted to, you know, things like that happen. Uh, our drummer had a stroke, you know, not a stroke, a heart, heart attack. Um, uh, he almost choked on his own vomit one time also, you know, those sort of things. But, but when bad things happen, like really bad things, mm -hmm. it's just like not as fun as, you know, but, you know, those sort of things happen all the time. I'll try to figure out something. I'll, I'll try to, yeah, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, any plans to come up with a full-length album in this year or the following year? Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, we'll have the time to do it uh, this year because Adam's become a dad uh, early year this year. I think it was in maybe in December or January. He got a kid. So... And also on top of that, he's playing hockey, which I guess you can't do in the summer, but yeah, that's what he does. Um, and then we're going to tour, you know, festivals. So it'll be hard to just get, get together and make an album this year. Maybe next year. We have pro promised our label that we'll do a live album also. So we'll uh, try to record the tours that we go on. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, just like to know, how did you come up with the name Dead Lord? I don't know. I was 23 and um, angry at everything. It sounded cool, basically. That's that's the answer to every Like, a band name is never as good as the band. Like, a band name is terrible unless the band is not terrible. For instance, Metallica? Yeah. That's not a good... <laughs> yeah, we want to play metal. Yeah. What are we going to call the band? Yeah, um, uh, 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 well, how about Metallica? <laughs> That's not a good band name. But the band was good. So the name ended up being good. And there are tons of examples of that. So uh, I don't know. It sounded cool. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. And uh, finally, what would be the message that you want to give to the fans around the world? Um, Stay at home. Don't go out to any shows because it's dangerous and you can catch a bug. So you should just stay there and don't ever do anything with your life. Just, just don't even don't even go out on the internet. Never do anything because everything's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I mock your words. <laughs> and, and thanks so much for giving me this opportunity to have this interview with you today. It was real fun. And a pleasure to meet you here today. And I wish you and the band all the best and looking forward for Dystopia on March 11th. And hope to see you guys on the road real soon. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.